Hi everyone, I'm Ale and I'm at Microsoft Build. I am joined by Craig, who is a senior PM for Windows Subsystem for Linux and has been there for the last, for over five years, right? That's right. Yeah, and I'm so excited to have him tell you all about WSL today. Okay, so Craig, can you tell us a little bit about what WSL is and why would developers want to use it? Yeah, so in a nutshell, the Windows subsystem for Linux is a way for people to run Linux workflows all on Windows. So that's kind of strange of why would you necessarily want to do that. Yeah. Um, the answer is more and more you need to be using both, right? And a great example of that is I'm in the cloud, mm -hmm. I want to you know, send to Docker, but I want to use all of my favorite Linux productivity tools, mm -hmm. I want to use some of the new you know, Copilot PCs that we announced, yeah. but I need to be able to push to Docker to use Linux. That's where WSL comes in. So it's a way for you to have your full Linux workflows all directly on Windows and it all feels exactly like the same machine. Awesome, and how would a developer get started with WSL? Super easy, um, all you have to do is go to your terminal and type in WSL space dash dash install and then that will do the full install process for you. If you're a fan of Winget, uh, we also added the ability to install WSL with Winget uh, this week at build. And so it now works if you have like a nice con Winget configure script to set up yeah. your PC, you can do your full WSL setup with that as well. And what are the different versions that you have for WSL? Right, so we support uh, two main kinds of WSL distros, mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a inbox version and store version of WSL. And so really, you know, the, the simple answer is when you click install, like WSL install, we default you to the latest, which is WSL2 okay. distros and the store version of WSL. So that lets you do things like run GUI apps, you have all the latest networking improvements, um, all on top of that in a virtualized way. So that's the main difference between WSL1 and WSL2. Oh, okay, and what Linux distros do you support? Uh, you can run everything in WSL, so you can actually take any Linux, uh, basically tar file, okay. and you can import that into WSL. But out of the box, we have some really well-known distros mm -hmm. supported by default. Uh, so if you run that WSL dash dash install command, yeah. we install Ubuntu for you mm -hmm. by default. And then you can also run WSL uh, dash L dash O for like list online. And you can see a list of all of the available distros online uh, that you can install. Things like OpenSUSE, Debian, uh, Kali Linux, and more. Can you explain the different benefits of, of the different uh, versions of WSL? Yeah, so when we talk about WSL1 and mm -hmm. WSL2, uh, WSL1 was the, the version that we came out initially. Yeah. If you remember Windows Phone, that's actually yeah. where it was born from. Oh, okay. it, was a, it was a feature for Windows Phone mm -hmm. that we transformed into a developer-focused feature. And what it did was it used a translation layer. So you had full Linux binaries running on Windows. They were translated into Windows API calls on the Windows kernel. Super okay. cool implementation. The challenge with that was that it, uh, it was really hard to implement some of the more challenging kernel calls in Linux. Yeah. Things like namespaces, uh, things like what Docker might use. And so we moved to a new architecture uh, called WSL2. And so that changed it entirely from a translation layer, mm -hmm. so translating everything running on the Windows kernel, to a virtualization layer. And so we virtualize a real Linux kernel built by Microsoft, um, and we make a Linux VM. That's actually an innovation from Azure, so it launches in under a couple of seconds. And uh, we load that all in, and we run your distro there. And so when it comes to WSL1 and WSL2, uh, WSL2 is virtualization-based. It's the latest version, uh, and it has a lot of the latest features. OK, awesome. OK, so you talked a little bit about the challenges that you had. What would you say working in the developer experience org would be mo one of the most rewarding things or one of the most challenging things, you know, being in that team where there's a lot of demand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I think my answer is kind of a selfish answer, which okay, is go ahead. <laughs> I love developing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm a big fan. Uh -huh. And so I like tend to make things like WSL is a tool that I use daily. Okay. And uh, it's just fun to make cool stuff. Like, exactly. it's cool to be able to run Linux, and I find it useful. Yeah. Um, and I identify as a, someone who likes software development. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's pretty fun when I get to make something new um, and have that moment for myself. And then it's yeah. extra fun when I get to have somebody else be able to go say, whoa, this totally solved my workflow, or this yeah. allowed me to create this new cool thing. Easily my favorite. 
and I think challenges are devs are not necessarily the easiest <laughs> uh, customers. Yeah. Uh, we're too smart, <laughs> I guess, uh, too intelligent to know that we're, if you put something out that isn't quite polished or, yeah. or has a, a, you know, maybe a risky decision in it, mm -hmm. devs will be the first people to say, why is it built this way? You know, we can change that. Yeah. So that's a challenge, um, but it only makes it more rewarding when you make something that's actually liked by the community. Exactly. So talking about dev requests and dev issues, how do you handle this, where can people report a bug, for example, or submit requests if you accept any, where do you usually have this interaction with the community? Yeah, so if you're a community member, uh, you can go to github.com slash Microsoft slash WSL. We have a GitHub repo where we uh, host all of the issues mm -hmm. for WSL publicly, and so you can go there, uh, file any new technical issue, and us on the WSL team will be able to triage it. You can ask for new feature requests, uh, and we're quite act active on there. We take a look every week and reply to people. Oh, nice. So uh, that's our community center. <laughs> okay, and now going over to like what's currently happen happening at WSL. Can you tell us a little bit of the latest updates? For sure. So we have some cool stuff coming um, and available now. And so uh, the, there's a lot of fundamental improvements that we've made. Uh, memory is getting improved. We added a auto memory reclaim function. So WSL, when you use it, we use the Linux file system caching. Um, and so anytime on Linux I access a file, it caches to memory because it's free space. Why not use it to speed yeah. up processes? But in a virtualized context, that balloons over time as you're using it. And WSL would, in the past, hold on to that block of memory okay. that's just file cache. So useful in the Linux context, but there are times where you'd want it back on Windows. And so what we did is we made a feature called Auto Memory Reclaim, which detects that you're idle, and then we drop that cache for you by default. So now in the latest versions of WSL on pre-release, that's on by default, or something you can turn on. Mm -hmm. So that's memory. We did the same for storage, where actual disk space on your machine, uh, that grows as you use it, but right now by default it doesn't shrink. And so we added a sparse VHD option um, that you can enable, and then it will make the WSL distro shrink as you delete stuff. Ooh, nice. And then networking is our last uh, big perf and fundamental improvement. Um, we added this new feature called DNS tunneling and a new networking mode called mirrored mode. The really short story of that is it allows you to have better network compatibility and new networking features like IPv6 support and the ability to access your server from the local area network. Um, and that new networking mode, mirrored mode, is really cool because it replaces the networking address translation architecture mm -hmm. to be an entirely new networking mode that mirrors all of your interfaces on Windows into Linux. Awesome. Um, so tons of different improvements. We have, we urge you really to go to uh, try WSL update pre-release as a command, and you can get the latest to try some of these features out. Awesome. And lastly, what's next for WSL? Oh, can you question. spoil us? The roadmap. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, so we have some great coming soon features that oh. you can try. Yeah. Um, the first is a WSL settings GUI app. Uh, and so, you know, when I talk about some of those features, yeah. of how do I know necessarily where to go and enable yeah. that networking mode? Um, we do have a text-based setting mm -hmm. because we love Linux and Linux is text-based, you know, settings. Yeah. And we've added a GUI app so you can go see what uh, options you have available, interact with those. Nice. Um, and the best part, it works great with the text-based editor as well. So you don't have to choose between one or the other. You can use them simultaneously, which okay. is nice. Um, and on top of that, we have uh, integration coming to Dev Home. So Dev Home is a tool, um, it's an app on Windows that is like a companion app for developers. And uh, we're adding the ability in a Dev Environments feature in there to manage your WSL distros. So we're going to have a um, GUI application so you can see what WSL distros are available, install, and interact with them. And a big shout out to Carlos Ramirez from Whitewater Foundry, as that was a community-driven uh, addition to Dev Home, <laughs> and so we're really happy to be integrating that into Dev Home. That's awesome. I love Dev Home. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I was great. playing around with it yesterday. Oh, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Anything else you'd like for the audience to know? Uh, I would say the big thing is please try out the latest version of the Windows subsystem for Linux and let us know how you feel about it. If you have any feedback on the WSL GitHub at Microsoft slash WSL, right on GitHub. And thank you for tuning in and happy coding. <laughs>